Blog Talk Radio. Uh... Welcome to this conversation about your Kundalini Awakening experience. This is Kristen, and I would like to welcome everybody who is in the in the chat room right now. I'd like to welcome Eileen and Rosemary, who are listening on on their phones, and anybody else that may be listening on their phones. I'd like to welcome Doc Vaj Two, Elizabeth Dalton Gonzalez Fashi. MJ Henderson, Secret Edworthy, and Guest 1491 and 1482, and anybody else who may be listening to us live right now as we broadcast this show. Um, today's show is going to be uh, interesting with regards to how the Kundalini takes care of those that it has awakened within. And but 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 first. Before we, we go any further, I would like to bring Her Holiness Amelia Santara on board. Hello, Amelia. Hi, Kristen. Hello, everybody. Hello, listeners. I'd just like to say to those in the chat room, I don't have a PC with me tonight, so I'm unable to follow your conversation. So maybe let Kristen know there if the sound is coming through okay and that, you know, that's that part of it is okay. So I'll begin by letting people know where they can go if they would like to make a donation to the Kundalini Awakening System. Wait, wait. Let's make sure the sound is going out. Fashti, Elizabeth, Sigrid, can you guys let us know right now if the sound is okay? Sometimes blog talk really gives us problems. Somebody start typing if you're hearing this. (laughs) I don't see anybody typing. So, um, oh, okay, MJ Henderson's typing. Thank you. Thank you. Is it coming through loud and clear? Um, uh, Yes. Ah, okay, very good. Please continue, Santara. Excuse my interruption. Okay, no, that's good to hear, Chris, and that it's coming through okay. So I was letting people know where they can go to if they want to make a donation to the Kundalini Awakening Systems uh, program, and it is at www.ascension-kundalini-blogspot.com, and you will find a donate button there on the upper right-hand side. Um, all donations are welcome, and please don't feel that, you know, you have to do this. It's if you want to do this, and if you are in a position to be able to do this financially, it would be most, most appreciated. So again, www.ascension-kundalini.blogspot.com. Looking forward to the show, Kristen. Wow, he has such a cool voice with that lovely lilting Irish accent. Isn't that right, everybody in the chat room? Doesn't she just sound... She's made for doing broadcasting, I think. Uh, So uh, I I tip my leprechaun hat to (laughs) you. Well, thank you, sir. You are so kind. (laughs) (laughs) And I'd like to say hello to John O'Connor, your husband. I would like to... To, uh, to to say earlier in the show that we are indebted to Amelia and John O'Connor for this program and that the only reason this program exists is because of their generosity and, and you know, the, the giving that they give to the world at large. We have people all over the world listening to this program. So, so John and Amelia, a heartfelt thank you from all of us to the two of you. On behalf of John, you're more than welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, in this conversation, well, first I'd like to say a little bit that, as, as I always say in the beginning of the program, uh, for people that want to find out more information along the lines of the Kundalini, especially those who are new to the Kundalini, I'll suggest that you go to the YouTube network where you can find about 300 videos uh, on the Kundalini. Uh, uh, 
you know, this is the YouTube. And then, of course, we have uh, four or five Facebook groups, one of which is Kundalini Awakening! Exclamation point, and Kundalini Awakening Systems 2 and Kundalini Awakening Systems 3. And we have a secret group, which, of course, is Kundalini Awakening Systems 1. We also have uh, Kundalini Healing on the Facebook networks, as well as uh, a private student group that, that is on Facebook. We have Kundalini Awakening Systems 1 on Yahoo uh, and Kundalini Healing on the Yahoo network. And we're also in Google Plus with Kundalini Awakening exclamation point on Google Plus. And so we have uh, a few areas where people can reach this information, and I invite all of you with that interest to go to those various areas. Um, for seminar information, uh, you can go to kundaliniawakeningseminars.com. And we also have a few pages uh, on the Facebook system as well. And I'm going to go ahead and bring Eileen on, and she'll tell us some more about those pages. Hi, Eileen. Hi, Tristan. Can you give us the names of those pages? Well, if there's one main page, and it's um, Kundalini Seminars and Events with Chrism. And on that page, we list the different events that are happening, uh, events, talks, and seminars. So we, we're trying to get people to go to that page. Now, so it's now, Kundalini. Emily, I'm go sorry? Ahead. Go ahead. It's Kundalini Seminars and Events with Chrism. Okay. And did you set that page up, Eileen? No, Amelia set it up, and then as people are doing, posting the different seminars, we come in and, and post our event pages. Well, I want to thank you and all the other people that are coming in, and of course, Amelia, for setting up that page. Thank you all. And You're I'll welcome. put you back in the sheet of blue. Do you have another announcement you, you would like to make, Eileen? Uh, well, I'll let Rosemary, if she's on, uh, talk about the seminar coming up in the talks. Okay. All right. I'll go ahead and put her on. Thank you, my Thank dear. You. Hello, Rosemary. Hello there, Kristen. Happy Wednesday to you. And a happy Wednesday to you as well. Do you have some announcements? Yes, I have the announcement from our it happening in our part of the world. There will be um, a seminar again at the request of the September seminar, February 21st and 22nd. And in preparation for that, we are I am showing the film around the cities, and also that the <coughs> between time now and then. December 1st to the 7th, you are coming to do talks here in the cities. Perfect time of the season of, of, of Christmas and the holidays to see the, the greatest gift that we have within us. So it will be great to, to have you with us too, Chrisom, during that time. And I have that week, uh, one, one day left yet to fill, but coming along very well. Thank you. Well, thank you. Thank you. It's an honor to be there. It's an honor to come. And thank you for setting it up and doing all that hard work that you're doing. All right. All right. And so we will go ahead and continue onward. Now, I'd like to welcome Julie, who just signed in. So hello, Julie. Ah, so when the Kundalini comes to an individual, Often it'll come early in the life, early in the childhood, and the childhood will be somewhat challenging for a lot of folks. Not everybody. I'm certainly not going to speak in, in, in uh, absolute terms, but for a lot of folks, it will be a very, very difficult childhood. I know that my childhood was somewhat challenging in that regards as well. And as I've mentioned in other programs, these challenges come from uh, people having to, to deal with karmic issues early on in life, when they're at their most vulnerable as a child. And this is as it needs to be in order to begin to sculpt the person towards the Kundalini awakening and activation events that will come into their future. And so, you know, the, the, the childhood may have, you know, any of a number of various uh, abusive situations, typically emotionally abusive, sometimes um, uh, physically abusive or sexually abusive. This is not uncommon. 
and uh, it does serve as part of the sculpting process for the individual. And a person might ask, well, my God, you know, why would why would the divine want a little child to have to go through all of that pain? Well. Every little child is an adult inside of that child, and every little child has just come into that lifetime after having lived many, many, many other lifetimes where they indeed collected levels of karma. And when a, when a soul is ready to begin to manifest kundalini transformation uh, in the body that they're going to occupy, uh, levels of karmic balancing will come forward, and this this is often a lot of karma. Okay, uh, you know they have they have worked hard in other lifetimes to burn that karma. You know maybe they were a priest, maybe, maybe they were a non medicine person, whatever. Somebody who was fair and and kind and benevolent, but still, there's still more karma to go. And so, as the as the child comes into life. There is this collected residue, uh, karmic residue from, from many other lives, and these need to be dealt with, and they're often dealt with in you know some fairly uh, distasteful ways. Uh, balancing karma is typically not the easiest thing that a person gets to go through. It can be very, very difficult. And yet, and yet, for the most part, the Kundalini child will not buckle. They will not commit suicide. They will not be allowed outside of that karmic paradigm that they agreed to be within. Okay, the, the parents were selected very carefully. The, uh, the, uh, the patterns of probability for that child's life uh, were looked at very carefully. So, you know, there's, there's not a lot to chance when it comes to the children. Um, as the child matures, well then yes, of course, the patterns of probability will expand and different levels of interaction with their karma and with other people around them who are there to, to nurture that karmic balancing will occur. Uh, as the person comes closer into the time when they're going to have their Kundalini, well then a whole different level of, of uh, shall we say, kundalini companionship begins to emerge. Uh, after you've activated the kundalini and as you're working towards, say, a spinal sweep and coming in to the actual awakening aspect of the kundalini, the kundalini begins to take on a very different level of interest and a very different level of interaction. Many times when I was homeless, you know, I was, I was you know, under attack. I was under attack by by uh, strangers sometimes. I was under attack by by bosses, you know, employers. I lived in a in a fairly consistent level of trauma and anxiety, and so of course, uh, you know, this this makes it somewhat of a very difficult lifetime to live. Uh, but I was protected. I remember at one point I was living in a vehicle. On the street, and uh, uh, I had to. I tried to start the vehicle, and the vehicle's engine caught on fire. And I, I really, you know, I didn't have a fire extinguisher. I didn't have anything like that. And I just did the silliest thing that you could imagine. And I just tried to blow it out with my breath, and it worked. <laughs> Much to my surprise, I blew that engine fire out. And this is just. One aspect of how the Kundalini can help you continue along your awakening path. Yeah, it, it, and this isn't anything that anybody would really believe you if you told them. You know, any anybody that's listening to this that doesn't have the Kundalini and it's just kind of like, you know, listening to this say through curiosity will just kind of consider me just some sort of a a fantasy laden, you know, nutcake, you know, and. <laughs> You know, I, I wouldn't blame them one bit because, you know, had I been in a different scenario, I would have probably felt the same way. But as you start moving into the Kundalini, as you begin to feel that pull and that urge to begin to clean up how you are, who you are, what you are, the Kundalini begins to to fold an energetic um, 
attention over you. I'm, I'm, I'm having to choose my words very carefully here. And this attention is watching you and, and helping you with that karma, helping you not become so despondent that you commit suicide or helping you so that so that you can overcome many of the uh, of the barriers to your complacency to the state of mind to to your ability to think clearly your mindfulness you know it would begin to be bring attention from it to you for the purpose of nurturing your activation now a lot of people you know though They'll get hooked on a drug. They'll get hooked on alcohol. They'll get hooked on some sort of a another type of drug. Or pharmaceuticals are really bad this way. These these SSRIs, the selected serotonin reuptake inhibitors. You know, they really the only thing they really inhibit or try to is the Kundalini by by blocking off the channels of expression that it that it uses within the person. And so uh, even then, even within that, the Kundalini will often you know, step in and, and really uh, try to give that person help, but it won't force that person to to accept that assistance. And this is where we get a, a high rate of suicide uh, from people that are having the Kundalini syndrome or they've taken drugs and the, and the drugs have caused the syndrome to come. And, uh, you know, this is very unfortunate, but they'll have their chance again. They will have their chance again. Okay. Uh, but for those of us that, that are able to go forward and to continue and to to nourish our kundalini or at least work on it to try to let it come in and 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 do through us uh you know the wonderful things that the kundalini does to the world and to the people and the animals and all creation on this world uh we strive to go forward and we will go forward and the kundalini will support us as we go forward. Now, I've had plenty of, of uh, opportunities to have some pretty nasty experiences happen to me. Uh, I remember, you know, walking. Well, <laughs> I was living in Southern California, and and, and my uh, my car was was a long ways off, and I had to walk back to get it, and I had to walk through some of the really really nasty, or shall I say, challenged areas. Of, of southern Orange County, around Torrance, around the uh, they used to have a marine base around there, and uh, you know the, the the very very high in the gang activities and uh, gangs that I didn't belong to. I've never belonged to a gang, and uh, you know these people took a real interest in watching me walk on their territory, and yet they didn't pursue. They didn't pursue me at all. And uh, and I wow I was really surprised and you know come to find out later that that well, that was a very uh, unusual tactic for them to take and of course these days I know exactly what was occurring and the Shakti was was protecting me but and, and it branches out into other areas for instance last night I went to go voting and and uh, you know a, a very very bad accident happened literally just like two feet to the left of my car. And, uh, you know, I, I heard it more than I saw it because I was going through the inter intersection at about 35, 40 miles an hour. And, and uh, you know, I was looking straight ahead. And, boy, when that sounded, that, that, a huge crumple and a shattering of glass and uh, screams and you name it, boy. And I pulled over. And what a mess. What an absolute mess. You know, people bleeding, people screaming, screaming. And it was, you know, very, very difficult. Uh, you know, for those poor folks who went through that. And as a Kundalini person, we do, of course, uh, lend as much of a help, a helping hand as we can. And, and, uh, and that was done. But once again, you know, I, I, for some reason, I was part of that scenario, but not in it, so to speak. And, and the interesting thing as well was those people who should have been really injured, even though they had some bleeding and some hysteria, they were not seriously injured. And I, you know, I, I have a feeling that the Kundalini radiance that they were sitting in as we went through the the, uh, the intersection, the Kundalini radiance reached out and helped them as well. 
And so I, I would like to really, really invite you, Kundalini active people, Kundalini awakened people, to recognize the effect, the profound, sometimes the profound effect that your radiance has on the people around you. And to really, you know, channel through your radiance, those good thoughts, those loving thoughts, those confident thoughts, those happy thoughts, those joyful thoughts, uh, thoughts that just give levels of, of validation to people where they need it the most. Uh, you don't have to, to get particular with it. You just have to say, maybe say to yourself, uh, a Kundalini in me, give the appropriate levels of assistance to those who walk into your radiance as it comes through me. And there you go. There you go. That's what you need to do. Um, and I also have another story, but I'm going to let Her Holiness, Amelia Santara, tell this story. Here you go, Amelia. Hello. Hello, Chris, and I know exactly what you're referring to, and you you know what my memory is like for details when something has, but I, I can remember, I won't remember all the details, but I was, this is what you're speaking of, is it, when I was sitting in the car with you during one of my yes. visits to the ashram, yes. yeah, yes. to the ashram, and we were possibly turning right, were we? No, 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 we were going straight through an intersection. <laughs> We were going straight through. We were going the straight other through. person was turning. Somebody, somebody turned left right in front of us. That's it right. was going to be a T-bone. That's right. That's right. Yes, 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 yes. And it was your response. I have no idea. This is what I'm remembering. I have no idea how you actually avoided it. I mean, how, whatever way, whatever thing you did with the wheel is what created, and you said afterwards, this is Kundalini, because we should have been impacted. It was miraculous that we weren't, you know? It really was. Yeah. So that was, that was a real example of of what you're yeah. speaking about. Well, don't let anybody <laughs> tell you that the age of miracles has passed, because it is not. It has no. not passed at all, and they're happening every day. And what the Kundalini did is it took a hold of the wheel and and in such an amazing precision move. This is why after it occurred, I I, I, I told Amelia, I said, that, that was the Kundalini. I could not have done that. And what it did is it turned the wheel sharply to the right so that we were going to go right into a a light pole, a, a, a large mm. metal light pole. And then it turned the wheel sharply to the left very quickly. And not only did we miss the light pole, but we missed that person who was going to teach, <laughs> going to run right into us as well. They were so shocked. <laughs> up in the middle of the intersection. I could see that in my rearview mirror. Uh, both Amelia and I had our hearts in our throat and were just so thankful to the Kundalini for doing this. And this is not the first time. This has happened, you know, with other people that are, have been in the vehicle, and it just it just amazes me that the kundalini is so sharp and so precise and knows exactly what to do. Uh, the age of miracles, certainly kundalini miracles, is present right now in your lives, all of us, not just Amelia and I, but, but Rosemary, Eileen, Amelia, myself, Elizabeth, Julie, Fashji, the guests, uh, MJ Henderson, Secret Edwardy. We all have these opportunities for miracles to occur. And, you know, this is very important for you to really begin to validate in your life as you have the Kundalini. You look at Sigrid and, and John, you know, these are, these are some lovely, lovely people in, in Canada. And, and they're both having the Kundalini, a Kundalini couple. And, uh, you know, they were given the exact place to, to buy their land, to to move themselves from, you know, from various areas of Canada to a much prettier, in my opinion, much, much more beautiful place in Canada. And this is also protecting their interests. This is also protecting them, letting them know where to go, what to do, when to go, how to do. This is very, very important for people to understand that the Kundalini is not some, you know, divine entity that carved out of wood or stone or anything like that. It is, a, it is a living and breathing through you, breathing um, vital aspect 
of how you live your life once you're upon this path, Kundalini will take care of you. It won't do everything for you. I don't suggest you go out and play in the freeway and not expect to be hit by a car. It's not, you know, it's not giving you permission to be an idiot. <laughs> Seriously. You know, you don't, this isn't like, well, hey, yeah, I'll just go do this. I'll, you know, jump off a diving board into an empty swimming pool. Just to prove the kundalini. No, no, no. In that case, it will just let you suffer and this maybe resume <laughs> later on. Uh, so, so know this and understand that the kundalini is watching you. It is helping you. It is help, helping you learn. It is helping you to do for yourself, which you are not able as yet to do within the kundalini awakening equation now if there's anybody that would like to to call in and, and ask a question about their kundalini i want to give the number out the number is 347 that's in the united states area code 347-934-0026 any of you can call in i know there's plenty of you that are listening uh and they're not in the chat room they're just listening on the computer so hello 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 and uh if you feel like calling in the number is 347-934-0026 um i'm going to go ahead and bring santara back online now amelia yes Susan? have you experienced other forms of uh, direct interaction between yourself and your kundalini that would be uh, appropriately described as, as helping you or protecting you inside of difficult situations? Oh, hmm. the thing that came to my mind straight away wasn't, yeah, no, I, no, nothing, no, Christopher, I can't at this moment. Well, for I'm me, sorry. For, <laughs> no, that's quite all right, that's quite all right. Put, I put you on the spot anyway. Uh, for me, yeah, yeah, there have been plenty of times in my life uh, where, you know, doing a backflip off a diving board and then hitting the board before I, you know, got into the water, you know, that was not good. Uh, you know, various areas, having a horse roll over me and not having any damage whatsoever. Uh, hitting a cow broadside on a, uh, a Yamaha 252 stroke motorcycle going about 65, the cow walked out of a tall cornfield just to, just, just to give me a caveat for not being totally, totally stupid. Um, you know, when the cow walks out of a cornfield and stops and looks at you and you're, you know, you have enough time to reach for the handbrake and that's it. And I was unconscious on the side of the road, they estimate for about 40 minutes. And once again, I had virtually no damage. Yeah, I was knocked out, and the, the bike wound up in, the, in, a, in a barbed wire fence kind of over me, and, you know, I was just laying there. Uh, so was the poor cow. I felt very sorry about that. And, uh, yeah, I have to say that, uh, that I have been watched over in my life by the Kundalini for a very, very, very long time. And I wouldn't be surprised if there are other people that have had very, very similar scenarios, uh, you know, throughout their lives as this was going to be a, a plan for that person's lifetime. And this is known. This is known. And, and so, yeah, yeah, the Kundalini takes care of her children. She, you know, it's not unknown the level of, of positive interaction that you will have on the society that you live in. Okay. It's not unknown. I've, I've had, had... Go ahead. Sorry. I've had some things happen, Chris, and such as a very severe burn that did not progress to be a very severe severe burn, but it should have been. And also, I my life was definitely kundalini. I had an ectopic pregnancy, and my life was saved. I should have died. I should have died, and, and I didn't. And I, as, when I look back on that, I know that that was Kundalini. Yeah. And another thing is, Kundalini often has um, come and helped other people 
um, through my intercession, if you know what I mean. So oh. I'm traveling along the road and I get this huge pull when I get to the roundabout to turn the car around because Kundalini is directing me to do that. I turn the car around the roundabout and I head back. Um, and there at the side of the road is a, is a lady, a young woman, and she's just lying on the footpath. So I pull up the car, I get out, I speak with her, and I, I end up driving her home. A lot of things like that have happened. I'm, I'm sitting in a place in a different part of the country and the phone rings, and my sister tells me that her car is flat, you know, the battery is flat, my children are in the car, and there's quite a difficult situation that she needs to be going to. Anyway, I am given, through the, the Kundalini gives me a visual, um, and through me, anyway, long story short, the battery is instantly fixed. My sister has said, I've tried everything, Amelia, what am I going to do? It was a bank holiday weekend, and I said, there's nobody around. We're living in the middle of the country. And I said to her, and I told her it was Kundalini, I said, go out to the car. It's going to be okay. It'll start again. And I had an absolute visual on it. And she sat into the car, turned on the engine, and the car began again. That sounds very trivial, but it's <laughs> not. It's, no, it's not. <laughs> it's, no, it's not it trivial. It certainly was all. not. Yeah, and also, not only was it, you know, the Kundalini coming to the direct assistance of somebody and um, that really needed it, it was also a teaching for those people of the presence of the Kundalini and how the Kundalini um, is actively present in, in a person's life. And I've lots and lots of things like that. that, that oh, yeah, and, 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 you know, these are all valid, valid, valid uh, experiences of the Kundalini uh, stepping in and helping, helping out. I'd like to, to welcome Julia uh, from Minneapolis to the conversation. Hello, Julia. And and so, yeah, there's there's quite a level of assistance that the Kundalini will give, and it doesn't end with, with you know emergency situations, I mean I've had I've had a guy pull a gun on me and and tell me to tell me to get off the land and I was such an impetuous little shit when I was younger and I just said what are you gonna do shoot me go ahead <laughs> and he backed off <laughs> you can see the Kundalini out of handful with me as when I was a teenager <laughs> but yeah if this this extends further into into how a marriage is going to go. You know, uh, sometimes we, we, we grow in love with each other, and sometimes we grow out of love with each other. And, you know, in our society, you know, we're, 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 we're constricted with, with our level of movement to a large degree, uh, with social, ex social expectation about whether a marriage is going to continue, whether it's not going to continue. And, and, here in this type of a scenario, the Kundalini will assert itself into the marriage equation. Uh, uh, no part of your life is sacrosanct that keeps the Kundalini out. The Kundalini knows you better than you know yourself, and as a kind of like a divine parent, it will it will put its hand on your shoulder. It will put its hand on your heart. It will put its hand on the shoulder and the heart of your spouse, and if and if it's untenable, if your if your marriage is untenable, then that is going to become uh, transformed. Not necessarily transformed in the way that all of a sudden you'll fall in love with each other again. Sometimes you just have to go your separate ways. Not the easiest thing to see, but. But when you're inside of the Kundalini and if you're surrendering to the Kundalini and if you're you're feeling what it has to show you, then yes, you'll understand that it, it indeed does have a great degree of control over our marriage life, our marital life. And, you know, and even if we have kids in the equation, the kids will always be taken care of. That that goes without even saying the Kundalini is is kind of like the ultimate parent. And the children will be taken care of, but they will not be taken care of within the, the equation of those two adults who maybe can't stop arguing or can't agree on anything or being abusive to each other, either emotionally, physically, or both. 
uh, this type of a scenario will, may not be tolerated by the Kundalini, and it will begin uh, to initiate a, 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 a divorce and, or a separation uh, just to, to really begin to help equalize or balance the situation that the Kundalini person is going through. Certainly, if there is no need for karma, you know, that type of a karmic balancing, well, the Kundalini will step in and begin to make those types of changes. So don't be surprised if this is occurring to you. Any of you that are married, and maybe you're not in the best uh, marital communication at this point. You know, maybe the love has gone away, or maybe it's, it's turned in more into a, a, you know, an addiction to the status quo or, you know, a, a common uh, element of, of, uh, of convenience for each other. Uh, the kundalini can and will begin to end a marriage, and, and you need to understand that and, and surrender to the kundalini. And just make sure that you're able to discern that this is indeed kundalini and not your ego, you know, just trying to look for any other, other way out of a, of, a, of a hurtful situation. Okay. So I really, I really wanted to go through this uh, with all of you, that the kundalini protects you. But here's another aspect of that protection, is that you must work the process. You must surrender to the process. You must begin to inculcate within your life the activities, attitudes, thought processes, that are processes that are that are nourishment to the kundalini. You don't just get to to go. Oh well, I have kundalini. I don't have to do anything now. You know, a lot of belief systems, especially in the East, you know, they have they have some fairly uh, strong uh, expectations of the kundalini being a certain way. You know, when you reach a certain stage, then you're going to feel this, and you're going to feel that, and you're going to feel this, and that's just the absolute way it's going to work, and that there is no other way. And this isn't necessarily the case. Kundalini takes things on, a, on an individual basis, case by case by case by case. And you have to lift a finger in this process. You, you will need to do your devotions to the Kundalini. You will need to pay attention to what it tells you. You will need to pay attention to how it urges you to go one way or the other. You know, we're talking about food. You know, you're going to go veggie for a while. You're going to go carnivore for a while, or you're going to have sex for a while, you're not going to have any sex for a while. I mean, it will begin to really uh, dominate your human-based expressive bodies, your physical body, mental body, emotional body, psychological body, and your spiritual body. Kundalini will begin to control these, and you need to be okay with that. You need to be okay with that. It, it has your best interests at heart. Okay. So work that process. Here, I espouse the safeties. I espouse the safety protocol. You can get to those safety protocols by going to Kundalini Awakening Systems One dot com. And if you look at the menu on the left hand side down, I believe it's the fifth option. It says the safeties. Practice those as much as you can. Those were written by the Kundalini for people who have the Kundalini and are wanting the kundalini. So the more you work the process, the more the kundalini is going to work that process in you. And as it works that process in you, it is going to shield you from unnecessary threats and unnecessary problems that would get in the way of your of your kundalini equation. Not to say, not to say that it's going to take out all the challenges, as it certainly isn't. It will not take out all the challenges, but it will take out those challenges that aren't necessary. You don't necessarily need to be in that accident. You don't necessarily need to be to be robbed at gunpoint. You don't necessarily need to have that disease or to have that terrible thing befall you or your child or your spouse or or anything that would take you away from the Kundalini awakening equation. Believe me, it's a fairly powerful uh, protective consciousness that is around you. And so as you work your process, so do you begin to, to enjoy the benefits of the Kundalini's process upon you, of its responsibility with you, its consideration for you. 
Now let's let's just move it into the financial realm here. You know, I mean, after 2007, you know, everybody took some really, really hard hits financially. And so you do the power of prayer that I've discussed in another program, and you can give, you can ask the Kundalini to arrange for money to be given to you. This is not uh, 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 unethical. This is not without morality. You need to eat. You need to pay the rent. If you live in Canada where, where Sigrid Edward and her husband John are living, you need to have some heat. Right? So you need to have uh, some sort of a, of a factor in your life that allows those basic needs to be given. And that is what the Kundalini will help you do. You just need to work the process. Do the good things that you're always there to do without expecting payment. Make the power of prayer. If you need $50,000 or whatever it is, then make those power prayers. I have done it. And it works. As you, as some of you know, the, the, the Kundalini took me to casinos. And I won at the casinos. I, you know, I had no idea that I would win, but I won. And I'm not, you know, I'm, yeah. Every, you know, just like Christ said, these things I do, you can do it more. And well, I, let me tell you, these things that the Kundalini has allowed me to do, it will do through you and more. Think about that if you're putting a new roof on your house and you're having a hard time handling it. Think about that if, you, if you're if you looking for a new job and you haven't been able to find a new job and you're being pressured by family or by spouses or by your own personal responsibilities about having having an income. Think about that. Think about it if you just, you know, res, you know you're just on the brink of starting a uh, a, a new career that's kundalini based let it be a healing clinic or a some sort of a healthcare practitioner type of position think about that do those prayers for that and you can do these prayers for yourself yes 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 they are they are powerful and in some cases more powerful when you do it for another person okay i get that it, and it's true it is absolutely true uh, but you can still do it for yourself. And you do the same breathing technique that I discussed. Everything that I discussed in the parking lot outside that cafe in in in, in uh, Lake, oh boy, Minnetonka, Lake Minnetonka, Minnesota. Okay. When we did the Power Prayer uh, radio show there, you go back into the archives, you look for that show, you learn that technique. And it will help you. It will definitely help you. And I would like to bring Her Holiness back on right now. And, of course, we know that I'm talking about Miss Ireland herself, Amelia Santara. Hello, Amelia. (laughs) I'm back prison. Now, I understand that you may have some questions from the groups. Oh, yes, I have a few gathered. Um, the first one comes from Diva Sadvi, and she asked oh, this yeah, actually. Sadvi. Hello, she's, she's listening right now. She's in the archives. Or, I mean, ah, the archives. because she said she might not be, so I'm asking on her behalf. She sent me a private message, and here it is. Today you wrote something on one of your posts and she would like if you would explain a little bit more about it. And so I'm going to give you the quote, if that's okay. (laughs) Are you ready? (laughs) Let me get my seatbelt on here. Okay. (laughs) So this is it. The scriptures are there to help a person attain the kundalini in light in meant, not to control it or to tell one what parameters there are within it. This goes into controlling the kundalini, and even as one has kundalini, one isn't often given the full extent of their karma. That awaits the dispensation of the fleshless behind the veil examination of the life. And this is what she would like you to speak a bit more about, Prison. Oh, what what part of that was it? (laughs) I think all of it. (laughs) <laughs> well, I think the introduction was about, um, I think, um, you know, the scriptures are there to help a person with their enlightenment, not to control a person and, you know, dictate the parameters. And then I think it might be the next bit, you know, this goes into controlling the Kundalini. Kundalini. 
And I think that we are not given the full extent of our karma and that awaits the dispensation of the fleshless behind oh, the veil examination. That's such a long one. All right. All right. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's just a tiny fraction of it. <laughs> Oh my God! Me, Thank you, Chris. Okay, here we go. Here we go. I'm gonna go. I just, you know, I'm gonna go to what I wrote here so that I can actually see it. Because so that means I'm, I'm not able to see you on the chat group, folks, so, because I'm going over here to to write to look what was written. But I, I'm just, you know, some of these folks really are able to write a lot. Ah, yes. Okay. The writings are correct and they're incorrect. This is about the scriptures, everybody. The writings are correct and they're incorrect, meaning that aspects of them are correct uh, and, and then ask, aspects of them are incorrect due to incorrect interpretation. Because what they're taking out is they're, they're assuming that everybody is going to have the same response to the Kundalini that everybody else has had, and this is just not the case. Uh, I mean, of course, sometimes, yeah, everybody may get a Kriya in a group of people that are having Kundalini. Maybe, maybe Kriyas will, will, will come and, or, or maybe, you know, people will see entities. And if, if you're seeing an entity, then the, then the, maybe 60% of the people in the room will see entities. Not all of them, but 60% will. And so they're, they're basically trying to formulate and establish uh, protocol of interaction that the Kundalini will have on everyone, and this just doesn't occur. Everybody's got unique karma, so everybody comes to this table with a different level of, of experience that they're having. Granted, you know, Amelia may see one kind of entity like a Tinkerbell, uh, Kristen may see some other kind of entity like a gaseous pyramidal shape, okay, but you know, they're different. They are different. They may still both be entities, but they're different types of entities, and they're different. And so when the, when the, when the, these ancient texts are saying, oh, well, then you'll see this, and you'll see that, and, and uh, you know, absolutely not. Absolutely not. One must always factor in the karmic nature of the individual and, and, and factor out this, this ideation that people through their interpretation can just go ahead and, and blanket a, 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 the kundalini interaction, its personal interaction with everybody, and blanket that and color that the way it's going to be for everyone. It's just not the case. And so as one merges into the divine, yes, we have many things that are, are similar. With, you know, all is felt, known, experienced. You know, when you have that that union with the divine, all is known, all is felt, all is experienced. And, 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 it, and it happens, you know, for, for many people, it'll happen in that flash of, 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 of eternity. And, and the, the reason why I say flash of eternity is time takes on a very different standard for most people. I'm not going to say it's going to be eternity for everyone, but it's going to be timeless in a way. It, it, it kind of goes between the, the immediate flash and the, the eternal qualities of time, and then the work will proceed. And, and, uh, and we're never done while we're in the body. You know, self-realization is, is exactly what it means. Self-realization uh, of the divine that we have and are being transformed to uh, is unique to us as much, if not more, than it is similar to us. Okay? Uh, in many cases, you know, you know, the scriptures say, oh, well, once you've reached enlightenment, well, then you do. You know, I, I'm holding back from going into my Indian guru voice, just so you know. <laughs> so, so, so I won't go into this one, but no, I won't do it. <laughs> so, so, you know, they're, they're making the case that, oh, you never have to have a body again, or you never need to have a body again, or you won't come back with a body again, indicating that you've met all your karma. Well, this is not typically the case. Um, but, I, you know, the option to come back is given. The option to come back and to, and to be a light among the masses is given. And that is often taken up by people because their levels of love are so strong. For their brothers and sisters who are not awake yet, that they will they will go into a uh, a scenario where they will they will suffer and they will be abused, and yet they will also be able to to have and hold a kundalini awakening 
um, experience and and awaken that physical body that they're in and give that radiance into the populations. Um, and then the scriptures. The, the scriptures are also there to help a person attain the Kundalini enlightenment. Uh, they're there to to feed that flame, to fuel that flame. And and part of the ways that a lot of the scriptures did, well, you'll get this if you do that. And then if you do that, well, then you're going to get this shiny new car over here. or Or this shiny new psychic skill over here. Or this out-of-body experience or this type of, of, of interaction with the, you know, the divine, this, this, or that. And, and you need to understand that it's not always going to sell it to you that way. The scriptures are not correct when they make those types of promises because they don't know your karma. It's, they're, you know, they're trying to invent a, a kind of like a replicated cookie-cutter type of kundalini awakening. And it just doesn't happen in my experience of this. Now, maybe, maybe if you're part of a certain lineage and you know you're going through the whole lineage process, and so maybe because of the lineage, you know, the Kundalini knows you're in that lineage and it knows that you have this expectation and that expectation, and you know, then it'll 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 because for the longest time, you know, the lineages in, certainly in India were one of the few bastions of, of or areas where you could actually have the Kundalini and be okay and not be you know, put to the sword or, or you know, thrown into the snake pit as a crazy person, right? So, oftentimes, though, the scriptures, just like many, many of the martial arts practices or the Taoist practices, you know, they, they try to control the kundalini. And they, they try to tell a person what the parameters are within the kundalini awakening equation, and they don't know that person's karma. To say that a person will always experience this thing one way or the other is not true. It is not true. And, and it is so not true that, it, that it, it, it begs to be corrected. Okay. You know, how, there, there are very few people that are having... Uh, electrical kriyas, you know, for for years and years and years, and yet, you know, a very good friend of mine is having that right now. Where does it say that in the in the scriptures? Where is his activated event in the scriptures? Well, nowhere. And I invite you to try to find a a a, a kundalini awakened yogi or teacher who is having that or has even ever had that. Kundalini is not so precisely logged and charted and predictable is basically what I'm saying. Okay. And and because even within the, the full Kundalini awakening, uh, you don't necessarily get to have your karma. You don't even necessarily want to know about it. You know that you burned a lot of it. And you know that, that it, that's really up to the Kundalini to help you with. And so that that review of karma will wait until you decide to pass. If you decide to pass, whenever you're going to pass, okay? Uh, the, the flesh can be immortal, but it typically isn't. It typically isn't. And if it was immortal, it would just take people that much longer to learn the lessons they need to learn. This is why we have the gift, the gift of death. Death is a gift. It is not something to be you know, frightened of, and it's not something to go out and, and look for either. It's a gift that allows us to review how we're doing on our pathway to the divine, how we're doing on our path to God. And it's not going to be the same way for every person. That's basically what I was trying to say in that in that paragraph. And I apologize. I do apologize. First of all, if I've stepped on anybody's toes, and I'm sure there's a possibility that that is that occurred number one and and number two uh you know i i apologize for not writing it uh with a level of clarity that that would bring those points across uh, in, a, in a greater way in a greater context and, yeah. thank you chris and no that's that's really good can i just ask you you know do we can you okay so do we need a body in order to reach enlightenment. Yes, yes, I mean, oh yes. Yeah. 
So a body is an amazing gift, isn't it? It really is. It really yeah. is. You, you don't get to commit suicide or, or just like, oh, you know, the Japanese call it committing seppuku, right? You don't get to commit suicide and go, oh, wow, well, I'm enlightened now because you got to go through it all over again. Yeah. The, the, the kundalini has to reside in a physical expression in order to enlighten that physical expression, right? Yeah. So yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So I was. So the next question that's here is okay. You're welcome. How do you? Wait, wait, wait. You're welcome, my dear yeah. And uh, she's saying thank you. Uh, and, and so uh, thank you for ask, asking such an astute question <laughs> for my writing challenges. Go ahead. No, yeah. your writing isn't challenged. You know, when you write a sentence, there's so much in it that really that it's compressed. So it's wonderful for the opportunity to happen here for you to sort of unthread it or unravel it a little bit more for us. So there's nothing wrong with it. It just needs, you know, that's it. So thank you. Thanks as well to Diva Sadfi. The next question is, how do you surrender by just letting go? I constantly observe the ego and all that it clings to and wonder if I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. But it's well, all in divine timing, right? And that's no, the question. no, it's not necessarily in divine timing. Here's the thing. is is This is part of the responsibilities that we have. We have to lift a finger. This is part of us lifting a finger. We have to lift a finger and do the surrendering work. And now the... the the good part of that question is, how do I surrender? Well, you change. Surrendering is changing, a you know yourself from one behavior to another. So if you're if you're if you're holding a grudge against a person, will you change that behavior by forgiving them? And by doing that forgiveness within a kundalini context, remember how important context is. Within a kundalini context, if you're doing that, that forgiveness, then, then you are indeed surrendering to the will of the kundalini because it wants you to do that forgiveness. Forgiveness removes blockages. And so if you're watching the ego go through its, you know, its uh, patterns of expression, well, that's one thing. But don't just watch. Actively change that expression. You can control the ego. You don't have to buy the Snickers bar, okay? And if you live in Ireland, they don't even have Snickers bars there, I'm pretty sure. Is that right, Amelia? No Snickers bar in Ireland, right? Um, no, wrong, actually. We do. Oh, no. <laughs> the American equation. Yes, we, yeah, we have Snickers and Mars and all those things. Oh. Well. Don't even Hershey bar. chocolate. <laughs> you don't have to buy those Snickers bar even if you're in Ireland you don't have to buy the Snickers bar you don't have to lift that glass of alcohol you don't have to smoke that cigarette you don't have to to you know put that needle in your arm you don't have to sniff that white powder you don't have to flip that person off you don't have to hold that grudge you don't have to eat so much that you have to regurgitate in order to fit some more in. <laughs> Not that any of you do these things. <laughs> so, this is how you surrender as well. You make the necessary changes. You make the necessary changes. If you're a slovenly person, clean it up. If you're a disorganized person, well... Make sure you know where everything is. <laughs> One person's disorganization is another person's organization. So who who am I to judge, right? Um, if you're treating people a certain way that maybe isn't with with uh, you know kindness and consideration and compassion and helpfulness, change yourself into committing those acts of of, of compassion and and beauty upon another person. If you're so used to, 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 to cutting off people in traffic, to, to, then you have, sometimes you have to in L.A. Believe me, I've lived in L.A. Uh, you know, let other people go ahead of you. Balance out those scales. 
Okay? You don't just watch the ego go through its manifestations of behavior. You change it. And you change it consistently. You just don't do it. Okay, I didn't hold a I didn't hold a grudge yesterday. It was November sixth and and yeah, uh, no, I'm sorry. It was November fourth yesterday, and and I and I I didn't hold a grudge all day long. So okay, I'm going to hold a grudge now. No, these are permanent changes that the Kundalini is giving into you, and so therefore your behaviors need to also be changed permanently. Mm. Permanent changes. So as you watch the ego, and as you take the cues from the ego, from the safety protocols perhaps, you know, being more compassionate, being more sympathetic, being more forgiving, being more tolerant, being more honest, being more patient, being more trusting, being more loving, being more sincere in your love. As you practice just those nine qualities that I just mentioned, make them permanent. And then as you, as you, as you self-correct in the future, they become a, a, a much more stable level of expression and they will be amplified by your kundalini. This is also surrendering to the kundalini. And Vashti has a question. And I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask you a question. Santara, you ready? I'm ready. I was going to make a comment there, actually, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> and Basti asks, I'd like to question I'd like to ask a question about living a karma less life. Go ahead, Basti, we're waiting. Type it out. Type out that question or is that the question? Is that the question? So we'll wait for Basti to type. Um Well while he's typing, can I say something about about that yes. last yes, it's just yeah observing the ego sometimes i've i i'm aware of a couple of friends of mine who are big into observing you know and passively observing and allowing this to you know various behaviors you know they observe them and they don't get you know um caught up in them but at the same time they continue to do the same things over and over and one of the gifts really of the safeties in a kundalini context in any context but in a kundalini context is that you can actively apply those um, qualities to the ego because even if you're just observing the you know we're being controlled by something and the ego controls us and so when we apply the safeties in my experience that's how we bring permanent changes um, and how we surrender to the kundalini because something arises and I observe myself, let's take the traffic, I observe myself respond. Well, if I apply the ego um, or if I apply the safeties and I, and I choose tolerance, well then, you know, I can't just observe myself then, I'm actually directly changing my response. And when, because there is, there's a big bag of tools to pick from with the ego and when you are with the safeties and when you become really familiar with them, that's how we can really surrender to the Kundalini and bring changes um, to our ego's expression. And yeah. Hello? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, you know, I think the I think the safeties are incredible. I mean, they have made That's such a difference to my it's life. It's <laughs> absolutely correct. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> well, well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and and also, I suppose there there's a difference as well too in different. In my experience, you know, we can tolerate. So let's say something is coming and. You know, we know that we're being invited or asked or demanded to surrender to something. And sometimes we tolerate it. And that's a different thing to surrendering, I feel. Well, I agree. I agree. I mean, tolerating it is not necessary. Well, I mean, you know, you, know, you, can, you can tolerate. And, and if it's something that you haven't been tolerant of before, well, that's, that's yes. an issue of change. Okay. But if it's oh, something yes. that you... If you're just taking a step back and you're looking at it and you're not doing anything about it, I'm not sure that's tolerating. I, I, I just think that's more of a 
maybe a, a passive aggressive way of giving your attention to it without making any changes about it. Yeah, sort of putting up with something um, until it passes. Yeah, you're right, actually. I mean, tolerate, not in a tolerance way. Yeah, you're right. It's putting up with something and just waiting for it to pass, waiting for it to pass, and maybe even feeling irritated by the fact that it's not passing is what I mean. Right. Well, yeah. now let's yeah. let's look at Bashi's question. He says, uh, is it possible to act as an agent for a greater authority like the CIA, or such as the Kundalini, meaning all of your acts and thoughts are surrendered and performed in the name of the greater authority. Uh, of course, I understand how we have our own karma to work. Let's try that again. Is it possible to act as an agent for a greater authority such as the Kundalini, meaning that all of your acts and thoughts are surrendered and performed in the name of the greater authority? Eventually, yeah. Eventually, yeah. Uh, very difficult to change your thoughts when you're inside of the miasma, meaning the, the, uh, the emotional, mental, and survival-based expressions of thousands and hundreds of thousands of people that live around you. You have to remember that your kundalini footprint goes very, very wide, very, very, you know, almost a mile in diameter. And that's picking up a lot of thoughts, that's picking up a lot of emotions, that's picking up a lot of, you know, evil fantasies, a lot of greed, a lot of disrespect, a lot of invalidation, a lot of these things. And so it is possible as you, as you really, really, really apply yourself uh, as, as that agent of that greater authority, and then as much as possible, I won't, I won't go into the absolute with this because I don't think there is an absolute with it, but as much as possible, all of your acts and thoughts are surrendered and performed in the name of the greater authority. Well, we kind of do this now anyway with the Kundalini. It's just that, you know, some of our acts and some of our thoughts aren't that admirable at the moment. And so... We also trust that greater authority, in this case the Kundalini, to, to be compassionate, to help us learn to change, to help us to, to really, uh, uh, you know, give our, our complete and total uh, uh, surrender into that. And if you'd like to call in, Fast, you feel, feel free to call in if, if I haven't responded well enough. Or if you have something else you want to add, my friend, you feel free to call in. Uh, you know the number, and if you don't, it's 347-934-0026. And so if you wish to call in fast, you feel free. And until then, uh, Miss Irish uh, 2014, next question. I'm watching the, I'm watching the, uh, okay, so I'm just going over to where my questions are written, so I'm not watching the, um, I'm not watching the switchboard. Okay. Um, yes, I wanted to know if any of you have experienced Kundalini rash or even heard of it. I'm currently experiencing it. You Kundalini are? rash. No, this is the question. <laughs> Although, I... Like, seriously. <laughs> I want to tell now that you've asked. Oh, um, sure. I guess, I guess, no, here we go now. I mean, you did ask, so it's coming. <laughs> Um, that was a question from somebody on the group. But I get a, a rash on my head, like pimples, um, and then it suddenly disappears. And then it suddenly, co- I mean, my whole head covers in, is covered in them. And then it vanishes again. It's quite extraordinary, in my opinion. <laughs> so you're going <laughs> to, it's not even going to go there. <laughs> no, okay. Right. Well, let's go back then. Let's let's no, no, just no, ignore no. that. No. <laughs> <laughs> the, the rash is common. Yeah, so you will get a. What it is is the energetic anatomy is, is is having so much energy run through it that that energetic anatomy is running that energy through the skin, and the and the skin can form a, a, a kind of like a heat rash, and but it's not. It doesn't follow the same ideology of a heat rash. It, it kind of has its own unique expression. Uh, you'll get little fluid-covered blisters, little tiny things, like maybe a, a quarter of a millimeter across. Um, sometimes they'll be very, very itchy, 
don't scratch them because you have the possibility of scarring your your skin. Um, it's not like poison oak. It's not like uh, poison ivy. It's not like urushiol oil, which is the oils in both of those plants. Uh, it's something that is typically temporary, lasts about three, four days, maybe a week. Uh, you can you can keep the area really dry. Uh, on your head, it's a little harder because, you know, the the hair and the sweat glands in the head will constantly keep that uh, not dry, not moist, uh, more moist than it should be. And you'll also, you can get it behind the ear as well. You can get it behind the ears, right where the ear is attached to the head. You can also get it under the breasts and under the arms and in the rectal and the genital areas as well, behind the knees. Um, and so you just want to really keep those areas dry, keep them clean, especially when you, when you, when you go to the toilet and if you're if you're uh, if you're um, if, if you're having a bowel movement of, of fecal matter, you want to make sure that you clean as much of that fecal matter out of that area because that that also because you know the tailbone's right there. That's the the, the seat of the soul, so to speak. And that stuff's going to really really. It's very powerful that the excrement of a kundalini person is very, very powerful in its level of toxicity. And so, you know, that can also form a kind of a rash. And, and if you're scratching that and then you scratch your head or scratch your arm or scratch somewhere else, you can actually spread that because it's the toxins in this case that are causing the rash, not so much the kundalini. The kundalini is having the detox effect upon the body, getting rid of that really, really, really strong fecal uh, matter and yet, you don't. You want to make sure all of that is off of your skin everywhere. This is why a bidet is. If you can get a bidet, uh, a secret, you and John ought to put a, a bidet in that new house of yours over there in Canada. There you go. <laughs> Too much. I just want to say it. It has nothing to do with my head. What you just talked about there. <laughs> it's nothing scratching my head. <laughs> But yeah, the rash the rash will be irritating. Um, sometimes in some yeah. people it lasts it lasts much longer. I've known it to last for years on some folk, but for the majority of the people, it's a three four day event, and then uh, you know right under that percentage, uh, it'll be maybe three or four weeks, and then right under that percentage, you know, it'll be three or four months, and so on and so forth. Oh, mine can be just a day, and then it's gone. I can wake go. up in the morning and it's gone, you know, and I'm going, wow, well, that's John, amazing. John, your husband is up there wiping his head. like, oh, my God, I thought it was me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, moving on. <laughs> Actually, maybe there was a question about teeth as well, Chrism. Wait, and wait, for... wait, wait, let's see. Uh, Ma Deva on the, on the chat room says... Oh, boy, they're, they're going at it hot and heavy here. i got to keep up with them. Um, yes, I've got the rash on the head. My husband got the rash on the torso and waist really area really bad um, while I was going through the K-Awakening. And then uh, Julie responds, I had the rash on both arms just down from the elbows. And Bash, she says, so did I, Julie. So, <laughs> Julie says, my arm rashes lasted for about a year. So there you go. And, and uh, Fashi's not giving us a timeline. Oh, okay. Fashi's only lasted for a week or two. So that kind of follows. That kind of follows the unique aspect of it. Uh, the rashes will be unique to the individual. And the thing is, is the more the individual detoxes while they're having the rash, the detoxification of the emotional body, of the the mental fixations, of the physical body, of the of the egoic body. Uh, this all adds in also to the length and time and longevity of these rashes on the skin. It's not all connected to to just one form of energy. Okay, when you when you detox your your emotions, you begin to detox that rash. When you detox, you know, and start you know moving in a in a in a line of forgiveness, you can begin to work on that rash too. And then there's also just that level of of special heat that the kundalini the kundalini will inflict upon the skin and that it's in and of itself is almost like a burn and this this burn this burn can you know give you those raised 
those small raised welts. These are not raised welts like you get with, like I said, with Kundalini or with uh, poison oak or poison ivy. It's not like that at all, or, or stinging nettles, which which they have in Ireland a lot, I, I remember. Um, it's not like that. It's different than that. It's, it's not the full-fledged chemical blister. It's a much smaller pinhead type of blister. That's nice, yeah. And Elizabeth Dalton yeah. says, Mine lasted for about a year and now comes back if I try to wear jewelry. Well, there you go. Now, you see how the Kundalini can use these things as a form of communication. What not to do. And in, in Elizabeth Dalton Gonzalez's case, EDG, uh, the Kundalini says, don't wear jewelry. And every time she puts that jewelry on, well, what happens? Hello. You know, and so she gets she gets a very clear level of communication. Okay, I'm done. Okay. Could you say a little bit about teeth? Teeth? And, and the Kundalini. Oh, teeth and the Kundalini. Well, then that makes it a little different. Uh, the teeth represent a, and, and as, as Julia, B A V, B I V. Julia, how do you pronounce that? B E A I V I. E V A B, backwards. Anyway, uh, each tooth represents a, a sector of the body. Each tooth. And the Kundalini, as it goes through the body, if you have a lot of dental work, it can start dissolving that dental work. I've had it occur. Um, yeah, uh, your gum line, your gums will be protected a lot by the Kundalini, but if you have a lot of, like, say, silver mercury, um, uh, what do they call fillings in your teeth, uh, that can really become a problem. Uh, if you have bridge work, that can also be dissolved very, very quickly. Um, it's, it's not the easiest scenario with the Kundalini in the teeth. Certainly, in the in the more reactive uh, areas leading up to a a uh, <laughs> oh, there it is. thank you, Julia. Bye, D. Bye, D. Okay, got it. Uh, in the more reactive areas of the of the Kundalini equation, as it moves into the spinal sweep zone, uh, yeah, it, it can be very, very hard on the teeth. And so, of course, it's necessary to brush your teeth. More important than brushing your teeth is flossing your teeth. And I recommend you use those little tiny micro brushes that you can fit between your teeth. I also recommend those little, uh, those little uh, uh, toothpicky type uh, things that they sell here in the States. I don't know about Europe, but here in the States they sell them. And they have a little line of floss across it. So it's kind of a, a mix between a toothpick and a floss. But you can floss, and I use those on my teeth as well. Um, but yeah, the Kundalini can be tough on the teeth, but you got to take care of them. This is part of the of the of the equation of of lifting a finger to change how the Kundalini equation is working on you. Very very important that you lift that finger. Very very important that you maintain a consistent level of hygiene with regards to your teeth every single day, sometimes twice a day if you can do it. Now, my teeth were stained irrevocably, my dentist told me, uh, during my homeless period when I didn't have running water, didn't have any of these types of things. But I still try to, to brush them, and I notice that I don't get a lot of blood coming out, you know, when I brush my teeth. My gums are in good condition, but, you know, the, the, the dentin on the teeth were, was damaged during those 12 years of homelessness. So, of course, the only reason I grow a beard is so I can hide all of that. <laughs> or or it could be that, that I finally came to the realization that a beard isn't there just so you can have something to cut. Next question. Can you hear that ticking sound? It's like something That's going easy. around and around in a circle. Like It's like a CD spinning or something. No? No. It's gone now. Okay, it's gone. It's gone. Okay. Next question. Right. I have a personal question, and it's not me now. I'm quoting here. Oh, I have right. a personal question. Yes, We're I smoke weed. Go ahead. I have a friend. <laughs> yes. 
yes, I smoke weed, and I'm not ashamed. It's the only drug I do. I don't even like the word. I prefer the word herb. It does help me to go into a meditative meditative trance, but if it hinders my awakening, can you please let me know? Thank we, you. I assume that he means like like marijuana. The end the, oh, oh, I see. I was su- I was assuming it's marijuana, yeah, or cannabis or whatever you call it in America. Hash, okay. Well, gra- is- grass. <laughs> well, now see, you can mow the grass. <laughs> um, gotcha. Fashi is a gotcha. Gotcha, man. <laughs> All right. So yeah, what, what the uh, what the what the cannabis will do is it will, if you use it a lot, like daily, which most you know users will do a lot of it daily, that'll burn out areas of your of your seventh chakra, and, it, and it's not good. It's not a good thing to do for a Kundalini person or a person that's going into the Kundalini or wanting to go into the Kundalini. Uh, you need to take care of that, that seventh chakra. That is a sacred space. That is sacred space for just the divine. And I'll tell you what, you know, a lot of people say, oh, I'm not addicted to marijuana. I use it every day, though. <laughs> but I'm not addicted to it. But I use it every day. <laughs> you know, it's called wake and bake. Um, don't Don't use it. I would say if you have to use it, use it four times a year. Now, one of the reasons where one of the areas where it's good is to to release uh, stuck energies, and I don't. Sometimes that's blockages, sometimes not. Uh, if you're under the guidance of a uh, of a uh, of a teacher, then the teacher can like say, okay, okay, smoke this and and uh, and 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 sit next to me, and they probably won't get possessed by by an entity uh, during that experience. Now, marijuana, just like alcohol, opens one up to entity possession, and this is not a good plan. This is not a good plan. And, and, uh, and so you just need to take that in consideration if it's something that you're going to do. You don't necessarily need to be having, having, having voices shouting at you or shouting obscenities at you in your head that only you can hear. <coughs> okay, and we're not just talking one or two; we're talking hundreds. And this is where you know you'll get the diagnosis of uh, schizophrenia, uh, you know, uh, paranoid schizophrenia, et cetera, et cetera, and so forth. So, uh, as with alcohol and as with other uh, drugs, you know, it's not so much a gateway to using more and more powerful drugs; it's a gateway to being possessed by entities. And I just don't su- suggest it at all. Uh, there are times and there are circumstances where it, it, it can be seen as beneficial. But using it every day, not a good plan. Not a good plan for Kundalini. All right. Finished with that one, Your Holiness. Put that joint down, Amelia. Come back to the microphone. Come on. <laughs> Exhale. Re- <laughs> <laughs> I guess. Okay, I'm back. I just stopped it out there. <laughs> okay. Um, let me see. Next question. Um, I have, again, and it's not me, I'm quoting, I have been reading all about Kundalini. However, I'm very puzzled on how to awaken it safely and permanently. I have not forced anything and don't intend to. So any idea how to awaken Kundalini? Yeah, well, maybe you've spoken, maybe that's, you speak about that all the time, really, Chris. And will I scratch that or do you want to say something on it? Well, I say do the safety protocols. That's the best way to do it. Write that in there. Safety protocols yeah. are the safest, the sanest, and the, and the, and the strongest format. Uh, of, of self-realization, awakening the Kundalini. There is no stronger form than except perhaps for Shakti Pot. And, and then if you're doing a Shakti Pot without the safeties, well, once again, you're taking big steps forward and big steps backward at the same time, splitting yourself up the middle. There mm. you go. <laughs> okay. 
Because the, 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 the safeties give a person refinement. Kundalini demands a certain level of refinement for it to be given within the person uh, in a safe and sane format so that you can dress the kids, you can drive the car, you can go to work, you can be a parent, you can be a lover, you can be a boyfriend, girlfriend, spouse. You have to have the levels of refinement taken care of first or at least in the process of it. And if you just receive Shakti Pot from a guru and then he just kind of turns you loose onto the world, well, all you have now is you have this Kundalini awakened person that has no refinement. And so they're falling victim to fear. They're falling victim to all of their desires because they haven't worked on their desires. They haven't done forgiveness. So they're going into grudges. You know, they're, you know, they're not taking care of, of their energetic hygiene. They're not taking care of their physical hygiene. You know, they're going in and they're just, it is not the way to come into the Kundalini if you want to do it in a way that is helpful to yourself and helpful to the environment around you. Mm. Mm. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so again, I'm quoting. Um, I, it's a, okay, this is from the group. Um, I have just finished Kundalini Yoga followed by some meditation. About 10 minutes I started crying. Um, sobbing, crying, sobbing. I cried and cried what seemed like forever. Then I felt really happy and my hips started swaying and I couldn't help but hum. I don't know what I was humming, but it was just coming out, hum after hum after hum. I've never experienced this with any past meditation. Could this be my throat chakra opening? I feel so light and at peace. So the well, not to, not to sound ho-hum about it, <laughs> boom boom <laughs> but, um, <thumbs. laughs> not the sound I'm going to, I'm going to have a special effect thing here for yeah okay go on. <laughs> <laughs> not to sound ho hum about it but these are levels of detox that the that the kundalini is giving a person you know and and <sighs> As the person cries and releases some of the areas that are hurting them or blocking them, what fills in that empty space where that toxic uh, attitude or energy used to be? Well, that's joy. The Kundalini is communicating in a very teaching, basic teaching style, uh, pleasure and pain. Okay, You release the toxicities uh, through the body, and that can sometimes come out as pain. And then as the Kundalini fills in those empty spaces... It fills it in with bliss. It fills it in with love. It fills it in with joy. And this can happen over and over and over. Yep. Oh, are you okay. finished? Yes. yes. That was a fairly, fairly basic one. But Celestial Rubies, Her Holiness, has another question about having to do with drugs. And she says, what about someone that has done a lot of different drugs and then quit them? How does that affect the awakening? Let's say a 15-year drug habit. Well, it depends on the drugs that were used, number one, and the, the, uh, the habituation with which they were used, number two. It will take a certain amount of time for certain areas of, uh, of the human system to be healed. Uh, one of the things that, of course, will really aid that healing is surrendering to the kundalini and asking the kundalini for healing, using the power prayer for the person, for that healing of the kundalini within that person. Um, you know, the, you know, sometimes, you know, these, these levels of crystal meth and crank and whatnot, those can be quite damaging. And so it will take time for a person's emotional body to be healed from that. It will often, it will it'll chew away at the emotional control of a person. And this is true with the people that smoke the marijuana as well, by the way. And if you're smoking a lot of marijuana or doing a lot of methamphetamine and you and you have a child, uh, depending on whether the both spouses are doing it or just one, uh, that child may also grow up, not a guarantee, but may also grow up with, with a severe emotional control deficiency. Uh, and so this is something that you want to be really aware of when you're participating in these in these entheogens or these drugs, it's, it's not just about you, but it's about your future and it's about your, your, your future progeny, if you even intend on having any, that are going to be affected by these drugs. They don't heal overnight. It takes time. It takes effort and it takes an ability to, to surrender to the Kundalini, surrender yourself in the most amazing ways, ways that are not 
socially acceptable, ways that are not certainly acceptable to the ego. Uh, these ways need to be embraced. The deeper you a person goes within their drug habit, uh, the deeper their surrender uh, to the kundalini needs to be. Ah, oh, she, she, she goes on. Cocaine, meth, marijuana, pills, LSD, mushrooms. <laughs> well, first of all, I'm not a real fan of mushrooms. You know what mushrooms are grown in, don't you? I mean, come on. I mean. <laughs> oh, and if you don't know, if you don't know, I want you to look that up on the <laughs> web. <laughs> So that's or if you're away, or if you're no, never mind. So, um, yeah, you know what goes in. Anyway, so yeah, all of these drugs that you're mentioning, they're pretty powerful. Uh, cocaine, not so much. Meth, yes. Much uh, marijuana for emotional, uh, <laughs> for emotional uh, control. The, a long-term use of marijuana can really, really cut down the emotional control. And it takes a while to stabilize those. And the, the pills, well, we don't know what those pills are, but the LSD, LSD can have a, a, a burning effect on the on the uh, on the energetic anatomy. It can burn you to the point where you, some part of you, will just say, "Oh God, enough, enough." Um, Methamphetamine literally chews its way through your energetic anatomy, and and uh, this opens up a a a real opportunity for possession, uh, long term possession, uh, because it takes a while for those things to to be healed, and therefore the possession uh, in and of itself is a hard thing to deal with. But when you and, and then you add into it having no emotional control, having uh, being susceptible to all the fears that the ego is putting out, because the ego is the whole reason you're even doing the drug in the first place, you know, and then, you know, adding in a lack of emotional control, adding mental confusion, and you've got a real recipe for some problems. And so even then, the kundalini can heal all these things, but it's not going to happen overnight. And it's going to require that a person come into this with a level of diligence and practice and replicability and consistency. You don't get to fall off the wagon and expect yourself to be healed. Yes, my dear. What if you're taking marijuana or cannabis medically and you're taking it a couple of times a week? If it's medically uh, supported or not, it's going to have this, you know, very okay. similar. Now, I know if you're if you're taking it for cancer. Um, um, I, I see what you're saying, Julie. Yeah, yeah, that would tie right in with your, with an entity phase on a person for sure. Absolutely. Uh, now, if you're taking can cannabis for cancer, it's still going to do the same thing. Now, the reason people take cannabis for cancer is to improve their appetite, and it's effective that way. And it also there are some pain mitigation areas too with that. Uh, but you know, when you're fighting cancer, you're fighting for your life. You're not going in it for a kundalini activation. You know, it's a different scenario. No, yeah. Yeah, but if you were, say, kundalini activated and you were taking it for pain or something rather than for, no, you know, no. the, the pleasure of, would that make a difference or does it still yeah, open yeah. you up? You don't want to take uh, cannabis for pain. No. Okay. Typically, cannabis will make pain much worse. It, it has an amplification, too. Okay. But only if you're in Ireland. Right. <laughs> I was going to ask an alcohol question, but I'm I'm not now. So okay. Uh, the next <laughs> question is. Yes. Um, it's more. Yeah. It's. I have a very calm period now. No signs. No special visual phenomena. Could this be related to that life throws me a very energy tasking taking task? Or what do you think? I feel as if some of you have felt that Kundalini, sorry, I feel as some of you have felt that Kundalini has deserted me, even though this is not the case. Any reflections? Well, in a, in a reflection scenario, my, my periods have pretty much uh, 
cleared up a lot. You know, I don't suffer from PMS okay. as much as I used to. Uh, boy, I, that's why I tell you. But no, it can clear up the, the the periods. It can get rid of PMS. It can it can really induce a flow. It can even, it can induce a double flow per month, and sometimes even a triple flow per month. And so, and yeah, that's it, not what she. That's no, she meant. That's not the question. <laughs> she meant she meant time. Let's let me. I'm having a very calm time now. No time and no frustration. We're not talking about menstruation? No, we're not. We're talking about no special visual phenomena and such. From somebody who has a very, very... I um, a period in there somewhere. Yes, yes. She said she's having a very calm period now. She means time. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I don't think that was out of the question. I mean, come on. Come on, chat room. I know. I, I'm having a okay, very good Okay. Well, continue yeah. then. Bye, Lisa. Bye, Lisa. <laughs> Where was I supposed to go with that? <laughs> okay. What flash do you say? I'm saying LOL and Celestial Ruby's going ha ha ha. Devas Aubrey's going ha ha ha. None of the guys are responding though. I can see how that is. <laughs> They're still traumatized. <laughs> okay. So will I will I move on? Please, no, no, ask the question. What, try to rephrase it though, would you? I would. I have a <laughs> I have a very ta- calm time now. There are yes. no signs and no special visual phenomena. Could this be related to that life has thrown me a very energy-taking task? What do you think? I feel as some of you have felt that Kay has deserted me, even though this is not the case. Any reflections? Well, it is like a sine wave. I mean, you'll, you'll get you know plenty of phenomena, then it'll go away. Uh, and that is a plateau experience. You know, plateau being flat. You're not you're not walking down the mountain. You're not walking up a mountain. You're walking across a plain, a plateau. And so, as you have the plateau experience, it's a place where you're really being given an opportunity to process what you've already received, process what you've learned, process what you've experienced, and getting yourself prepared to have more. Uh, and and no, Kundalini doesn't leave you, but you. You also don't get to leave it because you're not getting phenomena that you've grown to expect, okay? You don't depend on phenomena to chart your course. Early on in the activation, the people typically will use phenomena to chart their course. But in the long run, you're going to have those periods where there isn't phenomena, and then you're going to have periods where there's lots of phenomena. And you want to really, really just trust the kundalini, to give you what you need to do and continue to support the kundalini. I don't I don't hear this person mentioning the safeties at all. So this person, you know, is probably not doing the safeties at all, and so therefore not lifting as much of a finger as he or she could be lifting, and therefore, you know, asking just like, oh, wow, you know, I know it hasn't left me, but it is not giving me what I, what I used to have, and it's like, you know, I mean, gosh, you know, what's going on? No. (laughs) You have to lift a finger. You have to walk it. The kundalini is not going to put its fingers into your pants and walk your legs for you. (laughs) Okay? Okay. You have to do the work, work too. (laughs) Yes, sir. Yes, (laughs) ma'am. Okay. Thank you. Um. Are there any significant differences in the way one might experience a refinement process after a spinal sweep as opposed to experiencing refinement before a spinal sweep? Oh, I remember this question. Well, yeah, there's huge differences. Uh, Ask the question again. (laughs) Okay. Are there any... This is by these questions, so... 
it, you know, it's very intricate and it's very well worded. So, so at, so read it slowly for me. Are there any significant differences in the way one might experience a refinement process after a spinal sweep, as opposed to experiencing refinement before okay. a spinal sweep? Well, after the spinal sweep, when the when you have become at one with the holy of holies, when you have when you have merged with God, you know there are certain uh, tags of information, certain levels of knowingness that has occurred now, and you are forever changed because of that interaction with the divine source. And so, of course, from that amazing experience, uh, definite patterns of refinement will increase in some ways and decrease in other ways. You don't have to wonder, you know, what is this all about anymore? You don't have to wonder about, oh, do I surrender to this or do I not? You don't have to wonder, well, is this really the real thing or is it not? I mean, when you have bonded with God, when you have bonded with divine, uh, it, it makes a huge difference in, in your response to the levels of refinement that, that it will put you through. You'll, you'll become far more agreeable and understanding with levels of karmic refinement that you're currently undergoing or or, or personality refinement, self-correction, uh, it becomes far more of a, of a reason to celebrate. It's your, your, it changes your whole attitude after the spinal sweep. Now, coming up to the spinal sweep, you're still kind of going, well, it's like, God, I feel these urges, and I'm, you know, I'm having it, waking up in the guy in Mudra, waking up with, you know, in this Kriya, and I'm having all of this, and geez, you know, I'm, am I schizophrenic? Am I bipolar? I mean, what am I doing? I mean, it's like, Am I possessed? I mean, what's going on? What is this all about? What is it all for? And boom, the spinal sweep occurs, and then you know what it's all for. You know what it's all about. You know that you'll have to surrender. You'll know that you have to do the work. You'll know that the, that the refinement is serving very, very positive, powerful, purposeful uh, uh, purposes within you. So there you have that. Thank you, Griffin. Last night I had a dream, again, it's not me, that I was bit in the hand by a large snake that I was holding. Its fang sank deep into my hand and I had to pull out the fang after it bit me. I can't recall any pain associated with the experience. This snake came out of nowhere. It didn't seem to fit in or have anything to really do with the storyline of my dream. Can you say something about this, please? Yep, that's being bit by the Shakti, that is being bit by the Kundalini. The Kundalini has reached into that person's awareness inside of a dream where it has absolutely no business being there. And it does this as a, as a measurement of, of uh, there's a word that I can't, that's not coming to me right now, but because it is so out of place in the dream, that is going to form a very strong memory uh, of this occurrence. It's so out of place that that it's easy, easier for the person to remember it. And, and the fact that it's painless, uh, the fact that it bit that person, I think it bit him in the left arm too, uh, very, very, very uh, important invitation and uh, calling uh, into the kundalini. You know, when you get snake bit, a lot of the people that have the kundalini come to them say, yeah, I was bit, I was snake bit. And that happens in your dreams typically. But it can also happen in a waking vision. So that snake and those fangs and the fact that it's out of place all served to help that person remember the memory and to describe the memory to people who the kundalini know, knew would be able to explain it to him in a kundalini context. And I believe the snake was black as well, which is another kundalini color. Mm. You have that. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. And now another question. I am starting to incorporate the five Tibetans and have a question about the first right. What is the purpose of the spinning and why is it in a clockwise rotation? Well, the spinning is, is there to, to help a person understand that we can become helicopters if we truly want to be. We can fly. <laughs> <laughs> If you spin fast enough, you will leave the earth. Um, the, clock, the, the, the clockwise rotation 
uh, is is to the right, and it is a healing. It is the healing vector that the Tibetans, through their research, discovered that the the healing the healing vectors are to the right. Uh, there are there are other components that that are involved to the left, which I won't go into. Uh, people can get fairly nauseous going to the left, so I don't recommend it. Uh, certainly not within a Kundalini context. It does release a micro amount of Kundalini into the system that the next Tibetan will pull into the second chakra. And then the Tibetan after that will pull all of it from the first to the third and so on and so forth. And that is the reason why the spinning occurs to the right and what it does. Okay. Thank you, cousin. Um Okay, so I think that's the end of my questions. Oh, my. Do we have any questions? Oh, oh yes, what? Hmm. Yes? Are you okay? Are you speaking yes. to me? Yes. Yes, I'm okay. Why do you ask? Because you just said, oh. I'm fine. Oh, sorry. No, I'm fine. You I'm fine. There. Oh. You did it again. All right. Okay. We're having way too much fun here. Did I mention alcohol at all? You don't have to lift that glass. All right. Yeah. Okay, yeah, no, they're 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 definitely gone. There is a comment all right and I was just going to scroll down through the the group in case something had co- um, come up since I was here last. Um there is a comment um but it's not really a question. All right, well let's just get it that says, I would... Go ahead. No, I'll skip it. No, everybody's on edge now. What is it? <laughs> it says death is a gift. I feel that as if Master Chris and I share the same thought process. Who else is listening live? What do you think? I honestly think he's right. Kind of like pressing a restart in a Nintendo 64 without a memory card. <laughs> <laughs> I never, I never played. So who is this? <laughs> this is um, Stanley. Who? This is just a comment on the on the group about okay. death being a gift. Yes, yeah. so I think Stanley is probably listening live, um, hi, to us. Welcome, so welcome let's say to hi to him. Hi, Stanley. Hi, Stanley. Welcome to the group. Yes, death is definitely a gift. I'm not so sure it's a reset, but it's definitely a a, a review, definitely a review, and to see where you where you got your top scores during that Net, Nintendo game and. And where some of your some of your more challenged scoring maybe uh, could could use some improvement. So so yeah. Um, now maybe he means coming back as a Nintendo 64, but without the memory card in the next life. Could that be it? Sure. Never mind. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Um, behind the veil, being without the memory card. Um, I would like everyone to spread this. Show around. I mean, I keep asking people to do this. Now, of course, I'm not asking you, Centauri. You're, you're, you're already overburdened. But for any of you, Thank that, you. That, that have uh, the, the the time and maybe the intention, spread the show around. Um, put it on Reddit. Put it on Twitter. Put it on wherever you can put it. I mean, it is not. It's not good for this just to 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 sit in in cyberspace just wanting for people to listen to it let's let's give it an audience let's give it an audience I'm, I'm not asking you to put it on any create a fake id if you need to you know and put it somewhere where the people go and uh let's let's help as many people as we can that is one of the prime directives of the kundalini and, and if you're listening to this show and if it's helped you in any way sense or form um find a place to to help others Find it in your heart to help other people by spreading this show around. Uh, the more people that come into this information, the better our world will be, the better our environment will be, and the better our own Kundalini equation will go. And so I guess uh, I'm going to give uh, uh, 
you an opportunity to say good night, my dear. Could I ask one question, Kristen? You mentioned earlier about the teeth, and that did you say that each tooth represents a section of the body? A sector of the body. Sector of the body. What, what yes. do you mean by that? Uh, like uh, the molars could represent uh, the knees. Uh, the front teeth could recommend could could uh, represent the heart. Uh, if you look in Chinese traditional me medicine or traditional Chinese me medicine, uh, they'll associate the teeth with certain areas of the body. If you look at uh, uh, iridology, you know certain areas of the of the iris also rep represent certain areas of the body. If you look at the 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 ear, you know the ear and its folds also rec represent certain areas of the body. The body is full of of repetition in its symbolism for itself. And you look on the bottom of the foot. The palm of the hand, the tongue, yeah. uh, uh, facial recognition, occipital, uh, uh, or not. Uh, um, you look at the, in the sutures of the head. I mean, they all represent sectors of the body. Very cool. I ha I knew about the other, but I had never heard of the teeth. Okay, thanks. You're welcome. Well, well, will I say good night then? Wait, wait, wait. wait. I once had a dream, this is Fashti speaking, I once had a dream in which I was surrounded by a group of evil male entities. One of them shot me in the third eye with a death ray or a phaser. I, I added that part. And I experienced a death on a higher plane of consciousness. Any ideas on why I needed to experience death and its process? Um, yeah, it's in order to appreciate the life that you're currently living in order to appreciate everything that you have now, even the challenges right now. Um, I think all that the evil entity did was they took you out of, of uh, they, they, they took you out of a group that you were in. I, I was wondering if this was with, while you were in Ekinkar. Can you give me a yay or an A on that? If you were with Ekinkar, then that would have been some of the folks that are kind of like, you know, uh, keeping you from perhaps going to their little areas of the astral that they like to visit every night um, and uh, and getting the feeling that that was indeed yeah there you go Fashi, and you that it was part of your termination from that group and and, and those entities these evil male entities I mean you know as well as I do kind of how the whole Ekinkar thing is going. And uh, would you be surprised that it is controlled by some evil male entities? I wouldn't be. I wouldn't be at all. And why they're so paranoid about you coming back or you doing this or that with them. So, so there you have it. And... Uh, Amelia Centara, John O'Connor, thank you so much for having this program today. And uh, yes, yes, Amelia, I'll, I'll be happy to talk with you later on after the show. Um, everybody, we'll be coming back to this same Kundalini channel at this same Kundalini station at this same Kundalini time next week. And I want to wish you a good, happy early November. I had no idea what she just did. <laughs> she... <laughs> um, I was trying so, the sound effects. I apologize. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> we'll have to work on that. But anyway, <laughs> Amelia, John, have a beautiful night. Thank you. You're welcome. Everybody on the uh, chat group, have a beautiful night. Have a beautiful November. And I look forward to seeing all of you uh, this time next week. Thank you for coming. Bye-bye.